And away we go. We are here with the legendary Ron Allen at MacArthur Skate Shop, man. Uh, talk to us. Talk to the camera, man. What, what you doing here today? Oh, man, I got a chance to see you guys play some music. It was wonderful. It was good. It was like, you guys are really good, honestly. Like, I'm, you know, I come home and I get a chance to see people play music, and it makes me stoked because that's what I go out in the world and do, you know, so to come home and see the homies making music and stuff is tight. For sure, for sure. So where were you at when you were, uh, I seen you went to SkateCon. We was, was in SkaterCon, and, we, and then we went on a tour where we, we played, uh, we were up in Asylum in Chicago, and then we went down and we played uh, Modern Skate Park in Michigan, and then we went from there and we played my friend's club, Double Happiness in Columbus, and then we were in Cleveland for this thing called The Bash, and then we went to Louisville, Nashville, and then we ended up in Chattanooga. Right. So game. what genre would you call yourself? Oh, man, you know, I make hip-hop music because I love hip-hop music. And they call me MC Intelligence, but I just make music, man. You know what I mean? I, I used to think of it as being like, I make this music or that, but now I just make music. You know what I mean? Like, right. I just make, it's just beautiful music. Try to make beautiful music. Right. Yeah. Sure. You guys made some, I'm telling you, you guys were, I'm <laughs> hyped, man. I'm telling you, I'm serious, man. It's just sure. respect. Sure. Okay. So, um, talk to us about being... I mean, how long ago were you, did you become a professional skater? I turned pro in 1987. 1987? Yeah. Yeah. So at that time, were there other black pro skaters? I met him in 87. I always thought there were, you know? I thought there were, but I didn't meet them, so no, I didn't. I mean, there was, they had a Savannah contest, remember? There was contests that like, you'd see other skaters there, but they were mostly vert riders, like Tina Brown, Steve Stedham, um... Freddie DeSoto was one of the early guys that I saw that was just rad. So, right. so somebody uh, they had a big argument about it, and they said the verdict came in that I think you were the first to go pro. Well, I guess it came out in Thrasher during COVID. It said that I was the first African American to turn pro, and then to have a video part, like to have our video part, which I'm still filming now. So yeah, <laughs> and then, like that never stopped. Right, that never stopped. Stop. Can't stop, That's won't stop. So, uh, so Thrasher said it. Thrasher said it. I didn't say it. Right. At the end of the day, man, you got to let the Bible say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because if you say it, then you then you, then you, you on your own. And, you know, you can't be, you know. Skateboarding doesn't let you make any claims without people checking. Right. And nowadays with phones, you be talking and people be looking at their phone like, is this what you actually said? Let me, let me get my <laughs> phone out and see if this is actually true. You right. know what I mean? So, so talk to us about uh, being the first black pro skater and a black pro skater just in skateboarding through the through the generations. I mean, you came through the eighties, nineties. In the eighties, so, it was in the eighties. It was all about like kind of like skateboarding was character driven more than it was like ability driven for a long time. Skaters were good, but they were also characters. You right. had your Jeff Grossos, you had your Christian Asoys, you had guys that were characters. I, I kind of fit in that mode. Right. And then it, you could tell it's like every year got a little bit more serious, got a little more deeper, got a little more harder, the tricks got a little deep, bigger, you know. And mm -hmm. it got to the point where I look at it now and I see the pros now at, when I go to Tampa and, and skate at Tampa Pro and they're not partying. They're, their skating is so serious now that they're like actually athletes, you know what I mean? Right. But we always have to remember that we are professional toy reps, okay? And um, <laughs> that's just something that I think people forget sometimes, you know, because we represent a toy, which is a skateboard. Right. And like, they dropped off toy rep and they said pro. And a lot of people started to con connotate themselves like LeBron James. But LeBron James is an, as a part of the entertainment part of the Los Angeles Lakers, which is a way different part than what we do. We have a board that our name is on the bottom. We promote that board. And through that, we, you know, we make our money. Yet. It's, you know, shoes make money for you like that. But that's how boarding is. So a lot of people kind of forgotten that, that you represent a board, represent a toy. So when you represent a toy, you gotta be cool to kids. So don't be too serious. Yeah, be it's cool to fun. kids. Yeah, like it's like if you get too serious, like I ain't really, you know, at the end of the day, man, it's like you, you kind of, you're, I'm a 60 year old man who's still playing with the toy. <laughs> so if I get too serious, then it, then it takes a lot of the fun out of it. You know? Yeah. So I always wanted to ask you this. Where are you from? I'm from the Central Valley, a place called Visalia. Visalia! Mm. Right, and the Tom Knox is from there, the yeah. Pius Brothers. Woodward Skate Park. 
Uh, no, the first skate park, which is the Bobby G skate park through the YMCA, that was there. I worked really? at that one. Like me and Jim Tebow and Karen Zapata and Don Fisher. Wow. Don Fisher! Way back in the day. That's what's up. That's where we built the ramps and stuff. It was crazy. Hey, crazy yeah. Can you tell them the Stacey Morales story? Oh, gosh. I know, I know you hate Okay, so oh, when I was a kid, like, I, my dad used to take me to the concrete wave all the time, and he would go to the Angels game. And so he would, like, he'd, like, oh, you know, go skate, I'll be at the Angels game, and I'll pick you up when the Angels game is over. So I, and we were literally, the skate park was across the freeway, so you could see when the lights shut off, I was like, oh, the session's over, and dad's gonna come get me. So for years, I was just like, that's so dope that my dad lets me be independent and be at the skate park by myself doing my thing. So, I was at the public domain um, premiere, and Stacey Peralta was like, Ron Allen. And I was like, Stacey Peralta. And he goes, he used to babysit you. And I was like, babysit me? And he goes, yeah, your dad used to give me 20 bucks. Keep an eye on the little black kid at Concrete Wave. And Damn. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I was like the pro at the park at that time. Damn. So it was like my babysitter, you know? Yeah. Like, and that just really was like, it shows you how skateboarding is when you skateboard, as long as I've skateboarded, you're kind of been involved with, like you've seen people from start to finish, you know? Right. So it really does, it does humble you a little bit. I think sometimes the, the skaters need to recognize that like, it's a small window that you get a chance. You gotta take advantage of it, get the most out of it, and then, you know, enjoy what you're doing because it is such a small window to be a professional, skateboarder in this world, you know? Right. And with respect to everybody who's done it, man. Because it's like not easy. And it's not, it's like, we tend to look at it like, oh, it's easy because everybody's done it so successfully. But no one's really shown the backside of it. The tough times living with your girls and the tough times like trying to figure out what things are when you're maybe not where you're, that's at right there, you know? So, right. But, yeah. Man, that's what's up. But so, we, prov we keep going. So, the... You were a big part of the SoCal skate scene and the NorCal skate scene. Well, I was SoCal, and then I moved up north. Right. Yeah, and then I came up north, and everyone was like, why do you have goings, man? What are those? And I was like, I, I ride for going. And they're like, it's not like Thunder, Venture, Indy. Fuck you riding, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on every vibe, man. I've been like every, every vibe. Every vibe, you know, like... I've been around for the riding Southern California trucks in Northern California and like, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, what can you say about the where you're at, the NorCal skate scene? Northern California has always just been a scene of people skating and ripping. I think that's what like people forget about up here. Uh, down LA, same thing. A lot of guys rip, but they're closer to industry types, things that can help them make you know careers out of it. So I think sometimes, you know, L.A. tends to be a little bit more of the, the place if you really want to, you know, do more. Here, there's only a few, you know, there's a few things here, and if you get recognized by those things, you're fine. But if you don't, you know, it gets, you know, crickets and crazy. Can you, uh, what is a DIY skate park? And in, yeah, what's a DIY? To me, it's like the, one of the, the best places to skate that you don't have to, uh, at the park sometimes, you have the problem of you can't crack beers, you can't smoke a little herb, you know, guys smoke cigarettes, just wanna have a good time. And so some skate parks are more family oriented, so DIYs tend to be a little bit more older dudes oriented. You know? Right. Barbecues, stuff like that. So, um, Lower Bob's is DIY. Totally, that yeah. spot. I need to skate there more. <laughs> right, <laughs> And uh, there was Lurkside. There was- Lurkside was amazing. Lurkside was amazing. Border town, they ended up calling Woo. it. Man, all of them, you know. I mean, I was just in Toledo. They have this thing called the, the Kook Spot or something like that, and it's sick. And then there's one, like we skated one in Atlanta. And that was amazing. I'm like, a, man, I'm, I'm the DIY guy, man. I love going to them. There's yeah. always something cool. That's what's up, that's what's up. Okay, um, we're gonna wrap up, but not before. Um, who would you say right now is the skaters to watch? Who are legendary skaters you would like to shout out, even just as youngsters or that you've seen kind of come up? Well, you know, Tyshawn winning Skater of the Year, I think that was amazing. Another black man to win Skater of the Year makes you stoked. I do believe you should keep your eye on Nigel. I don't care what anybody says. That boy is amazing. Like, Nigel Houston still blows doors on anything that anybody else does. Did That's you it. see him as a kid at the yeah, parks? Yeah, he's, he's been, like, Nigel, I think, 
what, like he is so rad, but I think people want to, you know, people want to be negative and critical towards people that are at that level, and right. it's just sad because he's so. If you just got off whatever, he's killing it. Like honestly, one of the best skaters I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like a warrior of the of, of skateboarding. Well, he's in the Olympics now, yeah. which I forgot to ask you about skateboarding evolving the into the Olympics and then getting represented by a black skater. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is that ironic hey, man, from where it's you know, come from? I, I, uh, I told them a long time ago they're coming, and they're, they've been here for a while. And it's, you know, black skaters, skaters from the city, skaters from, you know, urban areas. And it's not so much a suburban middle class thing anymore. It's in cities. It's in everywhere, you know. Yeah. You know, um, I was like a year younger than all these fools, but you were older in the era where... Major John and D were like winning little yes. off camera skate competitions yes. with all the other kids. Yes. Can amazing. you talk about? Can, I mean, they amazing don't get a lot of. I mean, they were amazing skateboarders. They still are. They, it, it's amazing how our culture in this world of skateboarding has this weird habit of looking at kids with ability but not understanding where they come from. As a black skater, especially being someone at like 60 years of age, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, not trying to be too political. I just think sometimes, you know, we, like, we as black people got to own our own things. If we want to make things happen, we have to own our own things. And we have to, and in skateboarding, it's the same thing. We have to own our own things and sponsor our own people. And, and it, it's no disrespect to anybody else because I've, I've sponsored everybody, black, white, Latino, Asian. I don't care. If you're a good skater, you're a good skater. Right. But I do think that sometimes, like, some guys fall through the cracks and it's just something that happens, you know? Right, because these guys that we're talking about right now, they're like legends who should have totally. a viral board or totally. something totally. for the yeah. record. You but know? you know, there's always, and, and this is what I love about skateboarding, there's always the guys you know, and then there's always the guys you don't know. And I think sometimes the guys you don't know are always the ones that are really rad, or like the guys that like you wish you, you know what I mean? The guys you don't know. I remember, I remember there's a guy named Royce, and Royce used to skate pools when they had the big fire up in Claremont. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard about Royce, but I'd never, ever, I'd never seen him skate. Then one day we showed up and he was skating. And he was doing like four foot high, leaning the tails in a backyard pool and shit. And I remember going, that's why this dude is Royce. Like this dude, right. four foot high airs in backyard pools. It was amazing to us. Yeah. And so I just remember like, he wasn't on any magazine and wasn't getting interviewed by anybody. He was just ripping. Right. Sometimes your board speaks way more than your mouth can. For sure. Yeah. That's what we've always been brought up on. Right. So in today's era, well, real quick before I talk about today's era, did you see Tamba Lino jump off the freeway at Soma? Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, oh, no. Like, he's so much. And much love and respect for that man. That man jump off anything. Jump off, you jump off the moon someday, come down, land it. All right. Like, <laughs> I swear, man. Jump off the, the world. Like, All right. So, um, I've, been, I've been hearing a lot about a skater named Pooh Rail. From Frisco. Represent to the fullest. It's rad to see him at Tampa. It's rad to see that what he's doing. Much respect and keep doing it. Yeah. You don't know how many people are watching you. And respect. You know? Like sure. I just respect everybody, man. I, I'm I'm if you want some con I'm not the guy for controversy. Like right, I, right. I got too much I got too much love for people who are doing it. They got love for me for being what I you know, being me. So right. I, I you know. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not politically correct, but I, you know, with the homies, we, we talk, but it's, it's, I think sometimes skateboarding is, is a wonderful thing that without it, where would we all be? You know, honestly. Like, yeah. Where would we all be? Like, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd right. be making music, I know that, but I mean, shit. Be a wannabe gangster with wet weed or something, you know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> Wanna be gangster. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I gotta get this on record. The Defermery Skate Park and K Dub development. Um, can you speak on that real quick? Cause I saw it from afar, but I mean Amazing. What K Dub did with Defermery is gave people a chance to skate. And then Levi's came in and helped out too. And like all those guys came down, Marius and the crew. It's like Oakland's got a lot of love from skateboarding. You know what I mean? It's really dope. And I, I think they see it as not just, oh, we're gonna try to help out a community. 
there's opportunity here. Kids are good. And like, you know, <laughs> kids are, and you know, it's like kids are good and they're hungry. And right. that's like, we forget that sometimes. That's why, you know, I have rules, man. I don't, I don't like talk to the people like at a bar and talk about business and stuff like that because people are so hungry. They remember everything you say. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's probably better just to keep it right. light, keep it fun. Right. <laughs> you know? For sure, for sure. So, um, you said Visalia had the first skate park? No, Visalia had the first skate camp. This guy named Bobby G put together a camp with the YMCA and some other things and had a, had a skate camp. It, yeah. it didn't, it went, it was really hot. <laughs> it was in the Central Valley, so it was like 105 a couple of days where the kids couldn't even go out. But they made, we made the best of it. First camp. Fun. So you were teaching at the first Visalia skate camp? Yeah. Me, Jim Thibo, Karen Zapata came, but she left, and then Jim and Fisher, Don Fisher. Wow. And re, it was at Reedley Junior College. In we got to go over there and film some content. Well, I remember the, <laughs> the, the junior college, after the camp left, was like pretty much bummed that every bench and every wall had they had a wall, like it was pretty much torn up. Really? They like, they like destroyed a junior college. Damn. Like you have a camp six weeks or something, and people learn wall rides. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, that's what's up. like destroy a campus. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, like, that's why I think it's funny too. Like, there's a company, and it's just something they call themselves. They're ruining skateboarding or something. And yeah. I was like, you ain't ruining skateboarding. We did a good job for y'all showed up. I'm a plus. We did a good job. Like, if you were a skater in the '80s and '90s, you did you did a good job making skateboarding be like what it is. Right. So nobody's ruining it. They're just making a part, making it another good part. It's dope. Oh, everything. So, um, what's it called? I asked you about Pooh Real, but I didn't ask you about Joffin Garvey. Have Amazing. You, have you been seeing him blow up? Amazing. Amazing skater. I, I just remember when he used to skate Berkeley Park a lot. Just an amazing skater. Like, another one of the, you know, another one of the kids from this area. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. For real. You know? <laughs> this is, uh, lastly, lastly, where are we at right now? Is this kind of like a new turn of events for Oakland having a skate shop, MacArthur Skate Shop? It's I mean, dope. Graveyard? It's really dope. Between MacArthur and Break Free, Oakland is so taken care of. Eight Ball's also here. It's just so rad that, you know, from a guy who skated in Oakland for years and there was no shop, to see all these shops is rad. Yeah. We need to have like a shop contest or something everyone would represent. Mm. Downtown Oakland or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, a big demo. Like, yeah, like or something. Just but just so rad to see like uh like at this point. Because, you know, I when I first came up here there was no shops, you know, so Right. It's great to see. And so there was clean. That was a shop from Oakland. Had a little mini round from the back. You know what? Did they start first Friday? Because they had the free beer every first Friday yep. in 2005 yep. or whatever. Yeah, they, 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 were, they were about that. Well, I think someone saw what they did and kind of co-opted, you know, but. But they did have a first Friday, they right? They did. They were. <laughs> they had a first There's Friday. There's a lot of things back then that were like, you have to go on YouTube to see, like, you know, if you, look in, if you go on YouTube, look up Man Am video. Right. You see the first Man Am video. You see, we realized that a lot of amateurs were over 21. So at this at this place in Livermore, they had a man and video, Damn. and and they it was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah it was strippers and alcohol and skateboarding ramps, and it was great. That's what's up. <laughs> it's just all I'm saying is like it's just we just skateboarding has always been like that, man. It's like the the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. That's why I still do it. Yeah, can you talk about SkaterCon? I know a lot of NorCal skaters that do not know what that is. SkaterCon is the thing started in Arizona, and then they brought it up to LA, and it's just like a bunch of booths and skating and bands play and people get to show what they have and it's a really cool little event and it was started in arizona and then they moved it to la really? skater con yeah and a guy named adam does it it's amazing that's what's up that's what's up okay okay anything coming out are you working on a lot of stuff oh. i mean you still pro you still uh, got okay. a board so, you still okay. got a shoe and so, shit okay, i have a crooked guest model coming out really Ooh. soon so mark is working on the the sketches yeah that. And then I have a power wheel coming out really soon. And then another ADI board. And yeah, just, it's, you know, we just can't. How long speak. have you been on power? I've been riding power wheels since there was Team Todd. Back in the day when we were pro, we used to get power bearings because we would ride for other companies, but power bearings were so good. So you'd call up Team Todd and he was the team manager. He'd give you like power stuff. Yeah. And you'd be, so you'd have Santa Cruz wheels because that was your contract, but you'd have power bearings. Damn. Yeah. You know. That's what's up. So, hella years. Oh, but yeah. And then I took a little time, went for Paradise, because that was my homies, John and Nick. And then 
you know, that they, they went and did their thing, and then I, I went back to Palms. Okay. Come home. Like Converse, come back home. I was on Converse in 1987, 88, and then now I get Converse again, so. Right. What's your message for uh, kids in the ghetto who see skateboarding, think it's kind of cool, maybe have a high risk of getting in trouble, you know, with their family, you know, they come from like trouble homes, escape, would you recommend escape? I mean, what's your message for kids from the ghetto, specifically? Believe in what you do, no matter what you do and let your board speak for you if you ride a skateboard. Whatever you do, let it speak for you. Do not let others speak for you. So if you do art, let that speak for you. Dance, let that speak for you. Skateboarding, let that speak for you. Don't let other people speak for you. Because especially, especially in this day and age, it seems like everybody wants to say something from where people are. And, as, and we really just need just, just be yourself, love yourself, and, the, and, and allow yourself to be who you are. Right. And they'll be fine. Okay, one of my last questions. Okay. Can I ask you, are you a fan of Bad Brains? Have you seen them live? Oh, I love Bad Brains. Yeah. Bad Brains is probably amazing. I just heard a really funny story about Bad Brains, and so I'll pass it on to you. Okay. Um, my friend Atiba was eight years old and was at a uh, Colorado with his mom. They went to a record store on a Saturday, I guess, to go buy records, and they bought the Bad Brains album. They were going to go home and listen to it, and there was a, a, something happening at the park. Right. So it was a skateboard jam. So they went over to it, and I was standing there skating for the local park, or whatever. And they saw me, and like you know, I you know the mom saw me skating and stuff. And they were super nice, and so they turned to mom and were like, "We want to skateboard right now." And so from that point, the Atiba and his brother were at skateboards, and that way they were eight years old, and then the rest is history. What? So to hear that story is really uh, heartwarming.